Today, we are taking a hypothetical journey to Jupiter in an attempt to find a surface somewhere deep below its atmosphere. Our spaceship is indestructible and can withstand extreme temperatures, heat and radiation, all of which would kill us at or near this gas giant. On Earth, as well as other rocky planets, we can clearly see and imagine ourselves standing on the surface. We perceive planets to have some kind of a firm ground where you could stand on, but not all planets are made the same way. Jupiter is a gas giant made mostly of hydrogen and helium, with layers that grow more intense the deeper you go. Our journey to find the surface of Jupiter would start in the upper layers of its atmosphere. Jupiter's atmosphere, the part we can see with telescopes, is made up of thick clouds of gas, primarily hydrogen and helium, along with traces of methane, ammonia and water vapor. Even at this early point in our journey, Jupiter would kill you in a matter of hours due to its extremely high radiation levels. The first 30 to 50 miles of descent would take you through visible clouds forming Jupiter's famous striped appearance. These are bands of ammonia and other chemicals, creating colors like reddish-brown and white. The upper layer of clouds is extremely cold, with temperatures around minus 145 degrees Celsius or minus 234 degrees Fahrenheit. As you descend, you'll encounter distinct zones and belts that move in opposite directions, creating incredibly strong winds and massive storms. At this level, you'd experience winds reaching up to 400 miles per hour. However, you won't find any solid surface here, just thick clouds moving in powerful currents. As you descend further, approximately 100 to 250 miles down, conditions change dramatically. Atmospheric pressure increases, compressing the gas around you to a level comparable to diving deep underwater on Earth. Here, you'd encounter more complex cloud layers. In these deeper layers, temperatures rise from a few hundred to over 1,000 degrees Celsius. The ammonia clouds disappear, giving way to clouds made of ammonium hydrosulfide. As you descend further, you'll encounter a hotter region with clouds of water vapor, contributing to the massive lightning storms on Jupiter. These lightning storms are up to a thousand times stronger than those on Earth, creating intense bursts of light that illuminate the thick clouds. At this stage, temperatures rise significantly, and the pressure reaches levels that would be impossible to survive without extreme protection, such as our indestructible ship. However, there is still no sign of solid ground, just increasingly dense gas and clouds. Around 250 miles down, you would enter a zone where the atmosphere becomes so dense that it begins to act like a liquid. Descending through this layer, which extends thousands of miles, you'd witness a transformation in Jupiter's hydrogen, which makes up the majority of its atmosphere. At this depth, hydrogen actually starts to transition into a liquid state, a process called metallic hydrogen formation. At about 2,500 to 13,000 miles below the cloud tops, temperatures climb to thousands of degrees Celsius and pressures reach millions of times what we experience on Earth's surface. In this metallic hydrogen layer, hydrogen atoms are packed so tightly that they begin to conduct electricity. This metallic hydrogen is believed to contribute to Jupiter's intense magnetic field, the largest of any planet in the solar system. This transition zone is vast, occupying a significant portion of Jupiter's volume. Even at these depths, you wouldn't find a true solid surface. Instead, you would encounter a liquid-like layer, almost like a dense ocean of metallic hydrogen. Continuing deeper, you'd eventually approach what scientists think might be Jupiter's core. This region is around 20,000 to 25,000 miles below the cloud tops and is purely theoretical. Scientists believe there could be a solid or semi-solid core made up of rocky and metallic materials, perhaps surrounded by molten elements and compressed hydrogen compounds. Estimates vary, but some scientists think the core could be as large as Earth or even larger, though its true nature remains uncertain. At these depths, Temperatures reach approximately 24,000 degrees Celsius, or 43,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hotter than the surface of the Sun. And pressures climb to around 45 million times what we experience at sea level on Earth. 
If there is a core, it might be surrounded by a dense molten layer, making it unlike anything we could explore directly. This innermost layer may be the closest Jupiter has to a surface, but there is no probe or spacecraft that could withstand the crushing forces to reach it or withstand the immense temperatures. At 24,000 degrees Celsius, there is no substance that would even remain a solid. Unlike Earth, where a clear boundary exists between atmosphere and ground, Jupiter has no defined surface. It's composed mainly of gas and liquid, with no hard boundary between its layers. If you were to descend into Jupiter, you'd never land as you would on a rocky planet. Instead, you'd journey through layers of gas and liquid, encountering extreme pressures that compress gas into liquid before being crushed by gravitational forces and evaporated by temperatures long before reaching the core. NASA's Juno spacecraft has orbited Jupiter since 2016, providing valuable data about these layers. By measuring gravitational changes, magnetic fields, and atmospheric conditions, Juno gives scientists insights into Jupiter's structure. Although Juno can't penetrate to the core, it has helped confirm the existence of metallic hydrogen and study Jupiter's intense storms and magnetic fields. Although reaching Jupiter's core is impossible with current technology, studying these layers helps us comprehend the unique qualities of gas giants in our solar system. Trying to find Jupiter's surface is an exercise in extremes. You'd descend through icy clouds and violent storms, encounter dense metallic hydrogen, and finally reach a region where temperatures and pressures become unimaginably intense. Jupiter's lack of a solid surface means you'd continue descending until being crushed by the overwhelming pressure and incinerated by the colossal heat. While we may never reach a true surface on Jupiter, understanding its layers provides a window into planetary science and the incredible forces at play within our universe. We hope you enjoyed our descent into the depths of Jupiter and invite you to join us in our next episode of A Godless Universe.